News starts with breaking news. Good afternoon, everyone. Breaking now at noon, the Allegheny County Health Department is reporting a slight bump in new coronavirus cases. Today, the county is reporting 180 new cases. That's out of more than 1,700 test results up from 158 cases reported yesterday. And again, important to note that these are results from some tests as far back as June 24th. The county is also reporting seven new hospitalizations and one new death. Also breaking at noon, a group of parents is suing the owners of Kennywood, Sandcastle, and Idlewild over their mask policy. Under the policy, all guests are required to wear masks inside the park, but the group claims the policy violates the American with Disabilities Act. The lawsuit was filed on behalf of several children with special needs and their parents and one other adult. We're going to have more on Kennywood's opening in just a few minutes. Hot and humid outside right now. Severe weather team 11 meteorologist Jessica Faith is tracking when some storms could develop. Jessica. And we could see storms in just a few hours into the afternoon hours, but better chances are going to come this evening and especially tonight as a system pushes eastward into our area, giving us even more thunderstorms possibly than we saw yesterday. So be prepared for that. Today is looking to be the last day in the 90s, at least as we go into the weekend and early next week. So we're winding down uh, the heat as we go throughout the rest of today and this weekend looking much better as far as temperatures are concerned. But we're still looking at showers and storms for this weekend. I'm looking at the latest information from the forecast models and I'll show you the hour by hour coming up in just a little bit. Outdoor dining is now allowed at Allegheny County restaurants and bars. That new order went into effect at midnight, and while it gives businesses more freedom, there are still rules in place. As always, social distancing and wearing masks is a must. Customers have to sit at tables, not at the bar. You can only order three alcoholic drinks per visit. Outdoor dining must end at 11 p.m. p.m. indoor dining. Areas are off limits except for takeout and delivery service. Health officials hope the new order will allow them to control the spread of COVID-19 and limit the spike that we've been seeing since last month. As we mentioned at the top of this newscast, Allegheny County is reporting 180 new cases today, seven new hospitalizations. Since Sunday, the county has reported 1,117 new cases. Just 4% of recent infections are causing severe enough illness to result in hospitalization. The doors of the River Cas Rivers Casino are back open today. The Allegheny County Health Department shut down the casino for a week last Friday. Channel 11's Mike Holden found out what the casino is doing to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Rivers Casino is back open with new restrictions in place. Casino officials are stressing at this afternoon hour. This is being done for the safety and well-being of not only you, but also the staff. Channel 11 was right there as folks started lining up outside the casino well before doors even opened to the public. With masks in hand and cash nearby, they were eager to get inside for the first time since it shut down. Once 9 a.m. hit, they put on their masks and made their way through the entrance. Rivers on the North Shore reopened with new hours and a number of new rules and restrictions. Starting today and until further notice, there will be no smoking or use of tobacco products anywhere inside of the casino. No indoor dining or drinking is allowed. Takeout food, though, is available. Masks, again, must be worn at all times, and crews will be monitoring the situation. And finally, prior temperature checks, sanitizing, and social distancing practices will continue. Casino goers say they're adjusting to these changes. I don't like it because I am a smoker, and I have to come outside to smoke. That's not fair to us. And we're spending our money in there. If there's a requirement that says you got to wear a mask, you wear it. And the way it is now... Everybody has to wear a mask. And Rivers says they also have completed an indoor air quality upgrade to prevent the spread of COVID-19. I'm now checking in with casino officials about the next step in the process and why they decided to reopen in the first place. That part of the story is coming up for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting this afternoon from the North Shore, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. 
In less than an hour, Kennywood will open to season pass holders. This is the message posted on Twitter. It shows what Kennywood will be doing to keep everyone safe, but also what you can do to make sure everyone stays safe. Things like wearing a face covering, washing your hands frequently, and staying six feet apart. Masks can be taken off on the water rides and at cooling zones. We have a, what we feel is a very strong plan here. We have a lot of space here to ensure the social distancing. We can manage how many people come into the park. And Sandcastle will open to all guests today. Masks can be taken off while in the water or on slides. Kenny Wood's going to be open to the general public on Monday. You're going to have to buy your ticket online because of the capacity limit. Now to a decision that will impact more than 23,000 students and their families. The Pittsburgh Public School District gave us an update on how it's creating its back-to-school plan. Channel 11's Renee Wallace shows us where the district stands. Students may not be thinking about online learning or return to the classroom yet, but today Pittsburgh School District officials said it's almost ready with a plan to get students back to the books, but... The greatest priority, they say, is to do it safely. Making sure we understand the administration and, and, and board, we're going to do what's the safest for our faculty and staff, our students, and our families. Superintendent Dr. Anthony Hamlet and officials at the Pittsburgh School District not ready to publicly announce details of the plan for reopening city schools this fall, but said the district is making progress while keeping health and safety in mind. Students that come to school. They go home, they live with their grandparents, now you're exposing their grandparents to potentially getting COVID. So we got to think about all these things. Next Tuesday, the district will submit its initial draft of the reopening plan to the school board. If approved on July 22nd, that plan will then be submitted to the state for approval. According to the district, any final reopening plan will likely include a blended version of online and on-site learning. Students who return to brick-and-mortar school buildings will receive face-to-face -face instruction where and when it can be done safely. Social distancing will be maintained not just inside the schools but on school buses. Only one student per seat and bus route adjustment to achieve a more limited bus capacity are already underway. District officials said they have already been going over school building layouts to accommodate new CDC guidelines for social distancing. The district is also putting together options for those students who want to return to class but are at greater risk, examining ways they will be allowed to take part in online classes only. This week, we're going to start communicating to families around who, no matter what we do, no matter what safety precautions we put in place, what families are not going to return because they just have various concerns or various health issues that will not allow them to return. The final version of the plan will be announced publicly to parents and students on August 4th. Reporting from the North Side, I'm Renee Wallace, Channel 11 News. New at noon, September's Labor Day parade has been canceled because of coronavirus concerns. Labor leaders and Allegheny County Executive Rich Fitzgerald announced the decision just this morning. The Allegheny Fayette Central Labor Council will instead hold a weekend of service. We're working to learn when a water main in Shaler Township will be fixed. It broke this morning along Route 8 between Spencer Lane and Fall Run Road. That road was closed overnight, but one northbound lane of traffic is now getting by. Developing now a Pittsburgh family hurt while on vacation. Officials say a deck collapsed at a beach home, sending several to the hospital. Channel 11's Liz Kilmer reports. Five local people were taken to the hospital while vacationing in Virginia Beach. Our NBC affiliate there reports that two of them were seriously hurt when a deck collapsed. A vacation turning dangerous for a Pittsburgh family. A deck toppled over along the sand in Virginia Beach. Our NBC affiliate there, Wavy, reporting that the local group was staying in the rental property in the Sandbridge community when suddenly around 7 last night, the deck collapsed. A beach lifeguard supervisor on patrol saw it happen and ran over to help. Five people were taken to the hospital two of them seriously hurt but expected to recover. Our news partners report it's unclear how many were on the deck at the time. Those local folks apparently didn't want to go on camera there in Virginia Beach, but you will hear from a neighbor who saw the aftermath coming up tonight at 5. Back to you. Today, President Donald Trump is in Florida. He's looking to re-energize his re-election campaign. Channel 11 Serena Marshall is in Washington, D.C., where the president spoke right before his flight to Florida took off. 
Good afternoon. As COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the state of Florida, the president arriving for three different events, but none of them related to the pandemic. The president also didn't mention the pandemic before departing the White House this morning, even as the Sunshine State's numbers surge up 1,400 percent. And around the country, breaking another record, 60,000 new cases a day, higher than the record hit this spring. He did mention Tropical Storm Faye and took a few swipes at former vice president and his likely opponent, Joe Biden, and also addressed speculation on the possible clemency for his longtime friend and former political advisor, Roger Stone. Roger Stone was very unfairly treated, as were many people. And in the meantime, Comey and all these guys are walking around, including Biden and Obama, because we caught them spying on my campaign. Who would have believed that one? Roger Stone is expected to report to federal prison in Georgia in just a couple of days. Earlier this week, the Justice Department said it supports Stone reporting to prison on Tuesday. Reporting from outside of Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. New details now. Two 13-year-old boys are accused of using Molotov cocktails at the Buena Vista community pool. It's new details on a story that we brought you as breaking news yesterday morning. The building next to the pool had bathrooms, storage space, and a room for lifeguards. The pool is now shut down until further notice. Coronavirus infection rates surging across the country. We're taking a look at the numbers in the nation's new epicenter. First, we're open, then we're closed. Why these lockdowns could be bad for our mental health and what you can do to cope. We're quiet right now, but expect more showers and strong storms this afternoon, this evening, and tonight. I'll have the latest hour-by-hour -hour model forecast to show you coming up in about six minutes. Every candidate, every voice, every vote matters. From the campaign trail to your backyard, we're talking to the candidates about the big issues and to the voters who will decide the election. Channel 11 News, Decision 2020 coverage you can count on. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. With COVID cases on the rise and parts of our area going back into a shutdown mode, it's not just taking a financial toll, but an emotional toll as well. Channel 11's Angie Moreski takes a look at the psychological impact of this roller coaster and found out how best to cope. 
Just when things were starting to settle into a new normal, here we are, back in shutdown mode, leaving many with a feeling of emotional whiplash. Is it even tougher when you get smacked down a second time? It is. People are experiencing more frustration, more anger, sadness, despair. You're, you're I feel for we increasingly see people frustrated with the behavior of others, like some not wearing masks. But anxiety expert Dr. Alicia Kaplan says you can only control what you can control, so focus on your behavior. Having a daily structure is important. Get up, get dressed, get out of the house, even if it's just a little bit of time. Family time, trying to get a regular sleep schedule. Getting enough sleep is especially important. If we don't get a good night's sleep, we're not going to feel rested, so we're, we're going to feel sluggish and maybe even more emotional the next day. Also, with going back to school in question and people continuing to work from home, make it a priority to stay in touch with others and avoid the rut isolation can cause. The problem is, is then we can get in our own head and feel a little bit more lethargic or sad. And as human beings, we really need the comfort of each other. Control how much social media and negative news you're taking in and know when it's time to take a break. We have to understand for ourselves the triggers that can make us feel sad or embarrassed or um, anxious. Step away. There's nothing that has to commit you to that. Dr. Kaplan's best takeaway tip, be patient with yourself and others because we're all in this together. So take a step back, give yourself a break and those around you, and eventually we will get through this. Angie Moreski, Channel 11 News. Despite the low hospital numbers, UPMC doctors are still urging everyone wear a mask. And that message is especially targeted at younger people. They say the median age of recent COVID-19 patients has dropped. Now it's to just under 30 years old. Despite more people testing positive, often younger adults, we are not seeing the same pattern of increase in severe cases. And I believe we can keep it that way if we focus our efforts on protecting the frail, the elderly, and other vulnerable. Currently, there are 118 COVID patients at UPMC hospitals. The average age in the hospital is 60. And Dr. Yealy also said that he's impressed with Allegheny County's decision to close indoor dining. He called it a precision approach to target areas where the disease is most likely to spread. The SureSave grocery store in Pittsburgh's Bloomfield neighborhood will close by the end of the month. According to the Bloomfield Development Corporation, the store plans to reopen as a giant eagle community market and it's going to stay open during the transition. The Zillianople community pool is now going to be open to local residents only. Leaders say that pool has been packed and social distancing rules were not being followed. So as a solution now only people from Zillianople, Harmony, Jackson and Lancaster are allowed in. Guests must also wear a mask when they enter and while walking around the pool. We're trying to work through this and trying to be good to everyone. It's unfortunate that we can't open it to everybody, but we had to maintain these orders. There are no lounges set up. The snack bar is closed. Guests can bring their own chairs, towels, and snacks. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Things are looking quiet right now. We do expect more rain on the way. We do have increasing cloud cover, cover coming in from the east, and that is due to Tropical Storm Faye giving heavy rain to eastern Pennsylvania and portions of New Jersey and Delaware, but that's not where our rain is coming from. It will be coming from the west right now. A system is pushing eastward through the Midwest and the Great Lakes. That will be increasing our rain coverage as we go later into especially the evening and nighttime hours. So within the next hour or so, still looking dry. If you want to maybe take a bike ride, eat lunch outside, 
It's going to be hot, but as far as rain, you'll be good to go. For your evening commute, we're going to see rain increasing in coverage, mainly from west to east. So Newcastle, Beaver, Washington could be seeing some rain right around that time. As we continue to go throughout the evening hours around 830, notice we have more coverage and intensity starting to, to see the reds there. That's indicating some of the stronger thunderstorms and also heavy rain locally, heavy rain, so not wide coverage as far as the heavy rain is concerned, but some spots could be really racking up those rain totals as we go into the evening hours. Just like yesterday, where we had a few severe thunderstorms during the evening hours, I would not rule that out. I think that that will be a possibility as well as this system continues to deliver uh, rain coverage and intensity to our area. Later into the nighttime hours, we're going to see that rain push off toward the east around midnight, looking quieter. Still uh, pitter-patter of raindrops here and there throughout the nighttime hours. You may hear it while you're sleeping as far as anything intense or strong as far as storms are concerned. I think we'll be done as far as uh, throughout the overnight hours into the morning hours. Still dealing with just a few showers, but overall a pretty nice start to the day for your Saturday morning. And we do expect showers and storms not only for today, for tomorrow and Sunday. So throughout your weekend, those rain totals could be anywhere between an inch to even over two and a half inches of rain in some spots. I think isolated locations could get up to three inches of rain. So flash flooding will need to be monitored as we go throughout today and this weekend. Very hot and humid again, 94 for the high. And just like we've been saying, factor in the humidity. It's going to feel a lot hotter tonight, cooling down into the upper 60s, 69 degrees. On the warmer side, still muggy. Look at this. We will be going uh, close to uh, 10 to 15 degrees cooler. So we're going from 94 all the way down into the lower 80s for the high, 81. So for this entire weekend, we can always in view looking much better temperature wise. We have been dealing with this heat, scattered thunderstorms also expected, but not all day. Don't uh, cancel any outdoor plans. Beginning of the new work week still in the 80s. All right, looking good. Roughly one third of Americans haven't paid their rent or mortgage so far this month. The relief that's coming to people struggling to make ends meet. Teachers are trying to figure out what to do after hearing the president's plans for schools. I'm Blair Miller. They're telling me what they plan to do. In Severe Weather Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and rain is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live.
make sure you know everything happening in the morning. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. The Trump administration's push to reopen schools is being felt across the country. And today, we're hearing from those who will be working in the classroom. Senior correspondent Blair Miller from our Washington, D.C. Bureau spoke with teachers from across the nation about the ongoing debate. Many schools are working on plans right now, and with just weeks until the school year is set to start, some teachers feel like they're stuck in the middle. In the last two days, plans to reopen schools are starting to take shape, with some teachers not sure how to respond, like Lily Escal Garcia, a sixth grade teacher in Utah. I know exactly what um, teachers are feeling right now. They're scared for their students. They're scared for themselves. They're scared for the families we all go home to. The biggest worry among some teachers and administrators is not opening schools, but how to do it safely and with a plan that parents will support. We can't do it overnight. And we can't do it without someone giving us the resources. Some national teaching groups are calling for $175 billion for schools nationwide to reopen. Amy Gasser, a teacher in Ohio, says schools need to be ready to go. If um, the numbers spike, then, you know, we'll go back to the virtual and we will make sure everyone is safe as best can be and we will move forward with that. It's going to be one of those evolving situations where we need an open mind as educators. School administrators say the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, has been mostly quiet on the issue. She now says their plan for reopening is embrace social distancing, hand washing, and face masks in schools. Ultimately, it's not a matter of if schools should reopen. It's simply a matter of how. The CDC was planning to revise guidelines for schools after calls from the White House to do so, but the head of the CDC says now that's not happening, leaving schools to decide how to reopen. I'm Blair Miller for Channel 11 News. Target 11 investigates coronavirus contact tracing and why Pennsylvania could be lagging behind. Millions of Americans haven't been able to pay their rent or mortgage what the governor is doing to keep the coronavirus crisis from turning into a housing crisis. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Indoor dining and drinking is banned for at least another two weeks. What's new and what's next? Kennywood and Sandcastle are ready to open. Count on Channel 11 News every morning.
Channel 11 covers weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the unique weather patterns across our neighborhoods. It's why it can be raining in Beaver County. While it's dry in Westmoreland County. Weather coverage you can count on. Watch Channel 11 News at 6. Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. Infection rates are increasing and hospitals are strained in states that are now being called hot spots for the coronavirus. Arizona, California and Texas are all dealing with surges in cases. And in Florida, where the president is right now, infection rates are exploding and many more are still waiting to be tested. NBC's Sam Brock has the latest on the COVID crisis. This morning, Florida in free fall. Every day, it seems like another record. 120 deaths reported Thursday, a new daily high, pushing Florida's fatalities beyond 4,000 from COVID-19. ICU bed capacity in Miami-Dade County, the epicenter of the nation's new epicenter, now at nearly 92% and rising. We're full. If you come through the ER right now and when you're admitted, somebody has to figure out where's that bed going to be. While sending around 100 nurses to Miami-Dade to provide backup, Florida's governor downplaying a potential hospital crisis. If you uh, look at kind of what's going on, they have a lot of capacity in terms of, in terms of beds, uh, but particularly in some parts of the state, they have uh, seasonally less staff now. State data shows nearly half of Florida's intensive care units are at least 90% full as COVID testing lines bend around blocks. And the nation's top infectious disease expert highlights a harrowing fact. When you look at California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida, they're accounting for 50% of the new infections. With that oversized piece of the COVID pie, Disney World is set to reopen Saturday after a four-month shutdown. Mixed reactions over that decision. Annual pass holders allowed inside the park on Thursday for a preview. Popular characters keeping their distance. Temperature screenings, face coverings, and social distancing. Now all part of the most magical place on earth. At the Miami Beach Convention Center, lines of cars stretch around the block here of people waiting to get tested for COVID-19. This on the heels of a staggering figure Thursday. Across the state of Florida for the first time, more than one in five people who were tested came back positive for COVID-19. In Miami Beach, Sam Brock, NBC News. Temperatures in the 90s again today, but meteorologist Jessica Faith is tracking when we might feel some relief. We're looking at some relief this weekend, but right now for your midday temperatures, it's pretty hot. Already at 90 degrees, the big winner, uh, Beaver, 85 in Pittsburgh, 88 Greensburg. Now factor in the humidity. Look at how much hotter it feels across the area. Beaver, you feel about five degrees warmer. You feel like 95 degrees. Washington, also feeling quite steamy in your area, feels like 92. Almost there, Pittsburgh, with feel like temperature of 89 degrees. Now maybe you want to get outside, do some shopping. No, that is going to get very hot. Above average once again, once again in the 90s. This weekend, we're looking at a much desired change. I'll show you the latest forecast numbers and how cool we're going to get this weekend. That's coming up. A live look now from Cape May, New Jersey, as Tropical Storm Thay quickly moves up the East Coast. That storm will be dropping heavy rain uh, from coastal parts of the Mid-Atlantic right through New England, and that will be through Saturday. Roughly one-third of Americans haven't made a housing payment so far this month. Yesterday, Governor Tom Wolf extended a ban on evictions through the end of August. The ban had been set to expire today. Channel 11's Aaron Martin shows us what this means for those struggling to make ends meet right now. One of the most difficult parts of the coronavirus pandemic has been people's ability to pay for everyday things, whether it be groceries or their rent or mortgages. It's part of the reason why the governor's office banned evictions and foreclosures for the last several months. And just hours before that order was set to expire, it was unexpectedly extended. I mean, it's very difficult. You know, I'm behind on all my utilities now. When we spoke with Amber Davis this morning, difficult decisions laid ahead. In the spring, her hours were reduced and her husband was temporarily laid off. They were trying to catch up, even as the governor's moratorium on evictions and foreclosures was set to expire tomorrow. We were used to paying everything in full when it was time to pay it. And we weren't able to pay, you know, everything in full at that time. Minutes after we finished our interview, 
issue. The governor's office announced the moratorium is now extended through August 31st. It's a decision that comes as money is made available to help Pennsylvanians pay their rent and mortgages. Just this week, we started accepting applications to our rent relief and mortgage relief program at the state. And so we need some time for that to uh, start delivering funds to people. $175 million from the federal CARES Act has been set aside. State Representative Sarah Inamorado hopes that money will help offset the need to extend the moratorium further while protecting mom and pop landlords. That community and local ownership is really important for our housing stock. So we want to make sure that um, people aren't losing those properties. You know, it's an unexpected relief out. Davis you know, is happy to like, see. I say, yeah, you know, try to take advantage of anything you can right now. Now that federal and state money is still available to help people pay for their rents or their mortgages, even though that moratorium has now been extended for close to two months. It's something that Inamorado is hopeful that people will take advantage of and that they won't have any hesitation to ask for help during a pandemic. Reporting tonight in Millvale, Aaron Martin, Channel 11 News. Glee actress Naya Rivera is presumed dead after disappearing on a lake in Southern California. This is new surveillance video of Rivera and her four-year-old son renting a pontoon boat on Wednesday. Officials say about three hours later, another boater found her son on board asleep and alone. Authorities say the child had a life vest on and there was an adult life vest that was found on the boat. The child is safe and with family. Rivera was a cast member on Glee for six years, appearing in nearly every episode of the hit show. United Airlines has a tentative cost-cutting deal with the pilots' union. The airlines and the union have reached an agreement, or a tentative agreement anyway, for voluntary furloughs and early retirement packages. Exact details of the deal have not been released. It is the airline's latest effort to slash costs as the coronavirus pandemic devastates travel demand. The deal still needs to be ratified by union leaders next week. The dramatic rescue caught on camera after scaffolding collapsed 13 stories up. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we've been bringing you a special version of Local Steals and Deals, where we shine a spotlight on amazing companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses really are the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. With Local Steals and Deals, we bring you exclusive offers from these brands on products that make your life safer, brighter, and more fun at a time when we all really need it. Join us in making a difference. Simply pick up your phone and text USA to 65000 to learn more. Channel 11 Morning News brings you what's happening now. Tonight at midnight, new rules go into effect for Allegheny County bars and restaurants. Indoor dining and drinking is banned for at least another two weeks. What's new? We just got brand new information from that fire scene we've been talking about. And what's next? Kennywood and Sandcastle are ready to open. Everyone is welcome on Monday. The heat index this afternoon. 95 to 100 degrees. Count on Channel 11 News for live coverage every morning.
but he can read between the lines, like Judge Judy. We're learning more about the challenges health care workers are facing when they try to contain the coronavirus by contact tracing. Pennsylvania has more than 500 workers dedicated to contact tracing, but... That might not be enough. They might need hundreds more. The director of infection prevention at the Allegheny Health Network says tracing begins as soon as a case is confirmed. Generally, we say about 15 minutes or more of close contact within that six feet. So if they were closer than we are now, stood and had a conversation for 15 minutes or more, or if they live in the residence, of course. Some public health experts have suggested Pennsylvania may need more than 2,000 contact tracers. The state says that it will continue to add more to the front lines as they are needed. A scary scene in Boston. Two window washers stranded 13 stories up when the platform they were standing on gave way. Cell phone video captured the dramatic rescue. The fire department first tried to rescue the workers using a ladder truck, but it didn't reach high enough. So firefighters instead broke one window and opened another, pulling the men into the building. I'm grateful for them, and it was extremely hot for us to be up there setting up a whole new setup. Hours after the rescue, the workers were back on the job, removing the scaffolding. As the pandemic continues, more people are looking at expanding their stay-at-home circles, how you can make sure it's done safely. Today will be another sizzling day in the 90s, but coming up, I'll show you the latest numbers and our big cool-down this weekend. Sing along with the Flintstones and Happy Days. Weeknights at 6 and 6.30 on MeTV. When news is happening near you, Channel 11 is there. Aliquippa, Coriopolis, Moon. We cover news everywhere you live. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, Butler. For news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Severe weather coverage where you live. On Channel 11 News. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, more and more Americans are looking at expanding their stay-at-home social circles to include additional friends and family members. And experts say that can benefit mental health, but it's important to figure out the right fit for families and do set some ground rules. Sarah Dalif has the story. After months of the same places and faces, Americans are weary of isolation. Show of hands with the kids. 
How many of you are tired of this? A recent survey from John Hopkins University of U.S. adults finds nearly 14 percent reported signs of serious psychological distress, up nearly 10 percent compared to two years ago. One of the possible factors, loneliness. We definitely need that social interaction. And as someone with two young children, I want to talk to other adults. <laughs> the time may be right for some families to begin carefully expanding their COVID bubbles if they're in an area where cases aren't spiking. The main and most important thing is trying to identify people who share similar practices to you. Have open, honest conversations, keeping in mind any conditions that might place someone in a higher risk category. Make sure everyone is on the same page as far as wearing masks, social distancing, and venturing outside the home. Are you limiting it to really essential places like going to the grocery store? If you are working outside the home, what are the um, restrictions in place in your work environment? And decide what to do if someone in the bubble is exposed to the virus or if a routine changes, say someone needs to physically return to the office. Recognizing the need to be flexible as families expand their quarantines. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. And health experts say if you're in one of the virus hotspots, you likely want to hold off expanding your bubble or agree that members should be tested before getting together as a percentage of patients never experience any symptoms. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Happy Friday. Give a bit of sunshine outside right now. As we go into this weekend, we're looking at showers and storms. We're turning back into our forecast and a pretty impressive cool down on the way this weekend, but we still have to get through today. Right now, 85 degrees in Pittsburgh, winds out of the east southeast at about six miles per hour, mostly upper 80s on the map for this hour, but we do have a 90 degree mark in uh, Beaver right at 90 degrees, 88 in Greensburg, 86 in Washington. Those temperatures will continue to heat up in a pretty big way back into the 90s. Our stretch of 90 degree weather will be coming to an end today because this weekend we're going to drop back into the 80s. More on that in just a moment. 94 for the high, hot and humid. We're keeping that humidity and dew points today in the upper 60s. So quite uncomfortable, pretty close to 70 degrees though. So let's just go ahead and call it oppressive. Very uncomfortable weather expected. The heat index or the feels like temperatures will be in the upper 60s for most spots could feel like 96 degrees around peak heating hours later this afternoon. So for today, again, the high 94, we're dropping over 10 degrees all the way down into the lower 80s. The high for tomorrow, feeling pretty good out there, closer to average, a uh, whopping 81 degrees for the high for your Saturday just in time for the weekend. Weekend always in view. Back into the 80s, low to mid 80s expected. Now we're gonna have some late storms today, kind of like yesterday, but we could see even more action for more of the area later tonight. Isolated showers and scattered thunderstorms expected. Similar story for this weekend, scattered thunderstorms throughout the weekend on and off. So don't completely cancel your outdoor plans. Seeing these temperatures, you may wanna go ahead and get outside, so just pay attention to the forecast uh, later the better if you want to get outside uh, especially going into your Monday 82 degrees for the high 86 for your Tuesday looking to dry out nicely less coverage on Monday but looking to be completely dry for Tuesday those overnight lows will continue to be mostly in the low to mid 60s. Randall's Bakery is adding a new flavor to its tort family, the summertime inspired treat you can pick up today. Here's local steals and deals, Lisa Robertson. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and I have the best idea for you with local steals and deals. Right now, we're sanitizing, we're cleaning, we're disinfecting, right? A million times, a million ways. Oh my gosh. How would you like to have something do it for you with no chemicals? What? I know. This is from 4ID and it's the best idea ever. So here are the options we have for you. This is the large. So this is simply, they call it a lunch bag, but it's a large bag. You open this up, you put whatever you want to sterilize in here, right? You close it, you plug it in and turn it on and walk away. It does it for you. Then you have the medium, same thing. You want to sanitize something, you put it in here, you close it, you turn it on, you walk away. 
You close it, you turn it on, you walk away. There's even a phone sanitizer. You put your phone in there, you close it, you turn it on, you walk away. There's even a wand for taking it on the go. And here's the best part. You walk in the door and you put your keys in here. Are your keys sterile? No. Do you touch them all the time? Yes. You put your keys in here, you put your jewelry in here, you put your wallet in here, you put your gloves in here, you put your mask in here. And by the way, everyone else in the household does. Everybody puts their stuff in here. And then they close it, and they turn it on, and they walk away, and it's not using any chemicals. I love that. You don't have to use chemicals because these are actually using UV light, and they're giving you 99.9% .9 sterilization rate. That is amazing. I love the fact that this is part of your new routine. I love the fact that this is by your back door and everything on you goes in here. I love the fact that if you have a baby around, all the baby stuff goes in here because they keep putting everything in their mouths. I love the fact that who wants to think about, wait a minute, this is my favorite ring. I keep wearing it. I bet it's not sterile. I'm going to put it in here. Some jewelry, you don't even wash, you don't want to wash your hands with the jewelry on because it might not be good for the jewelry. Put it in here. There's a million reasons, but there's one way, and that's putting it in here, closing it, turning it on, walking away. If you go to localsteals.com right now, all of these great ideas are 40 to 43% off. It's just one of the amazing ideas we have for you, and I guarantee you're going to want a bunch of them. From the beginning, the first two cases of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is taking its toll on our region. Channel 11 has kept you informed, giving you the facts. I am declaring a state of emergency. Schools in Pennsylvania will be closing. Unemployment continues to rise. With a team you can trust, digging for new details. Brighton Rehab, bringing in the National Guard. How exactly this Reopening started. Reopening Pennsylvania will be done regionally. As our city reopens, Channel 11 News will cover everything happening in our area because we are coverage you can count on. Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. This fall, Big Ten sports will only play conference games. That includes Penn State. Conference leadership says the change gives schools the flexibility to reschedule or cancel games during the season. Affected sports include football, men's and women's soccer, field hockey, and women's volleyball. And one more important note, if a student athlete decides not to play, they will not lose their scholarship. Walmart is close to launching its own membership program. Walmart Plus would launch or would cost $98 and it would include same day delivery, fuel discounts, and other perks. The company is expected to unveil the program sometime this month. And new at noon, Prantles is adding a new flavor to its tort family. The bakery posted on Facebook the newest flavor. Pina Colada. It's a yellow cake loaded with pineapple filling and iced with white butter and cream covered 
and toasted coconut. It looks really good. Prantle's popular burnt almond tort has been named the best cake in America, and it is one of my favorites. I love that burnt almond tort. That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is tonight at 5. You can get breaking news updates anytime on our streaming apps. All you have to do is search WPXI on Apple TV, on Roku, or Amazon Fire. Have a great day. vacation, Barney. It's the summer of me, your TV vacation destination. You going on vacation, Sergeant? Any day away from you, pile, I consider a vacation. The perfect getaway is right at home. What am I going to do this summer? With me, TV. As always, featuring some of the greatest TV shows ever made. Yes, sir, I'm going to lay around home and just take it easy. You can find me, TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1169, and on these and other providers. This is Take 5, highlighting Western Pennsylvania's most innovative and successful businesses. Live daytime harness racing is still happening at the Meadows Racetrack in Washington, PA, despite COVID-19. Donnell Mock is the marketing director there. And Donnell, how can people watch these races? It's a great question. Um, they can watch at the Meadows Harness Racing.com. So there's not only can you watch the races live right on our website, but you can also wager on them if you're interested in betting on the horses. For those who are new to harness racing, can you give us what the gist is? Yes, yeah, so we're a sport where, unlike the thoroughbreds where you ride on their backs, we have a cart attached to the horses where the drivers drive them in the race. Um, it's very exciting. We have the only horses that do it are standard breads, and they're either bred to be a pacer, which their legs move together, or a trotter where they move diagonal. So for more information to learn about racing, you can go to our website also. And what days do you race and when? So we race Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 12.45 p.m. So hopefully fans will be able to get back on the track soon. Does it cost anything to come out to these races and are children allowed to attend? No, our sport's great that way. It's free to come watch. Uh, it's family friendly, good for all ages. Uh, before COVID, we had a lot of family fun nights and hopefully we'll get back to that soon. So it's great to wager you have to be 18, but to enjoy you can be any age. Your biggest race of the year is the Adios Pace for the Orchids. Can you give us the details on this? Yeah, it's an exciting day. We have three-year-old Colton Gallating Pacers from all over the country coming in to race in the Adios. It goes for about $400,000. Um, it's usually a really fun day, but this year it's going to look a little different. We're going to be doing a streaming event on our website along with our YouTube channel. So you can have a little party at home with your close family and friends and 